Hello. Intuitive gardening versus planting plans. Which one will I prefer? Well, this year I'm going to find out. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. For the last few years, uh, I have very much gardened intuitively and I've put plants uh, wherever I thought they would go and wherever there was a space and wherever it felt right for them to be. Um, but it, <laughs> it's quite hodgepodge and um, it certainly makes every bed uh, a polyculture. But I could do that by design. And last year, uh, Hugh Richards decided he would give intuitive gardening a go as well and see what he thought of it. This year, I've taken a completely different approach to growing food. Usually, I'd create a garden plan and that would then morph into a month by month planting plan so I knew exactly what would be happening at any given stage and have a solid idea. But this year, I decided to completely change that around and explore intuitive gardening. What happens if we ignore the should be done and start thinking about what could be possible? This intuitive gardening, it's sort of no rules gardening. Uh, it's not for everyone. It doesn't suit everybody's way of working. Uh, and one of the things that Hugh decided was that he would go back to uh, using a planting plan uh, but he would leave some space for intuitive gardening. Now it's a long time since I have quite strictly planned what will go in my garden so I thought this year I'd give Hugh's method a go and plant using a very intentional and very planned way. To help me do that uh, I actually signed up to Hugh Richards new course which is the productive planting plan Hugh is very kindly offering um, a nice discount on his course at the moment and I'll leave links to his course and information about that discount uh, in the video description. When the weather has permitted uh, I've been out in the garden doing a little bit of tidying up so I've cleared away uh, dead and decaying plants, got those into the compost heap, uh, I've weeded uh, in between some of these vegetables I've harvested quite a lot, uh, so there were uh, beetroots uh, and carrots in this bed in alternate rows. Uh, last year it had, at the end of the year, it had carrots and beans and carrots and beetroots alternating. So I've got the last few harvests of carrots left here and I'm also uh, leaving in a couple of these borage plants. They produce beautiful little purple or white flowers. I think in this area of the garden they're mostly the purple ones. They're really good for bees and pollinators, uh, providing food for them. And other beds, uh, I have cleared of weeds and then I've managed to get down uh, a layer of mulch. This is used straw that has been uh, duck bedding. It's a layer that's about two to three inches thick and I've done it for several reasons. Firstly, it's to reduce the amount of work because by providing a thick layer, it excludes the light from the soil surface and fewer weed seeds will germinate. Uh, secondly, uh, it will eventually break down and uh, the worms, the microbial action uh, and fungal action will uh, decompose it, take it all down into the soil and increase the organic matter in the soil. It will protect the soil uh, from both wind and water erosion. Uh, by covering the soil, the wind can't blow it away if it's very dry and it's less likely to get washed away uh, if for any reason we have a very heavy rainfall uh, and minor flooding here. And the last thing uh, that I find it useful for is that it keeps the soil warmer so that when it does come to spring, the soil underneath this layer is already nicely warmed up and ready for young seeds and seedlings to go into it. And this area of the garden, uh, which I call the market garden, I am going to continue to garden in an intuitive way. Uh, what I do need to do is get down all the old bean structures that were here last year, harvest any bean seeds that are left and give it a good old tidy up. 
And this year, rather than just veg in here, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, inspired by uh, Serena and Ian over at You Can't Eat the Grass, I'm going to be growing some cut flowers uh, together with some vegetables. Uh, and I'm also going to do tons and tons of companion planting. This is something I've been learning more about. And my next video will be all about companion planting. So my job over the next few days, um, weather permitting, will be to uh, take down this old bean support, clear the weeds, make it safe so I don't have uh, canes right at eye level. That's an important one. Uh, and the other thing I want to do is to cut back a couple of roses uh, where the very long branches are now hanging over pathways and just as a word of caution um, a few days ago i was out in the garden just actually checking to see whether the purple sprouting broccoli was ready to harvest which it isn't uh, but one of these rose stems i hadn't even really registered that it was there and i walked straight into it uh, it caught me uh, just under the eye quite painfully and it did remind me that actually I need to get my secateurs and go and deal with that. And then a couple of days later, uh, I was walking down uh, the main pathway and another rose caught me uh, on the lip and has cut it quite deeply. So it is worth having a look round and just making sure that your garden is safe for you to be in uh, and don't leave it until you actually get injured to do anything about it. This is a lovely wild rose. It's got very nice pink flowers and produces masses of hips. The weather has been fairly unkind today and it's raining again, but I did manage to uh, take down the bean stretchers from there uh, and uh, make this space a little more ready for what I've got planned this year. But if you want to find out what I've been growing in previous years and how I've created this garden, uh, you can find out in my new book. It's called Grounded and it will be published in about three weeks time. I'm starting to get very, very excited about it. You can order it on my website, bythefarm.com at Permanent Publications. If you're in America uh, at Chelsea Green Publishing, uh, in all good bookstores and online and in places like Amazon. So back to planning uh, the vegetable garden. Whose course doesn't just give you uh, a way to do a 12 month planting plan, but a step-by-step -step guide to creating a monthly plan, which gives you much more control uh, in terms of making sure you've got successional sowing done and you can do interplanting uh, more easily because you know what's coming next. So over the next few days, uh, because it's quite rainy at the moment, I'm going to spend a bit of time inside getting that planting plan sorted and less time out here uh, getting tackled by these roses uh, while I'm looking at the brassicas. And so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again next time.